Hi guys, this is SDJR Senef88 speaking with another update on the 2600 project. And as you can see, quite a lot has progressed. So uh, we'll get straight into this update, starting with the uh, boiler end, the, the loco itself, and uh, moving our way along until we get to, well, as you can see, the tender. So uh, be right back in a second. Starting off with the business end, uh, we've got the obviously uh, quite a few bits have changed on this. Uh, it looks maybe deceiving, it doesn't look like much has changed since the last update, but uh, quite a lot has. Uh, first of all, the height of the loco. Uh, when I, the last update, I had the boiler resting on the, the motor and the uh, uh, front of the, obviously the, the running plate, but since looking at it, uh, and also um, discussing it with a few other modelers, um, it did look a bit too high and looking back at the original image it also did look uh, quite high compared to the prototype. Um, I have um, I had a Lima, um, I have somewhere uh, one of the boxes behind me, uh, a Lima Mark, I, uh, Mark II coach, sorry, um, basically a, a weathering project and uh, a test piece and uh, I measured uh, the loco for the front pony truck to the top. And this, the locomotive towered over the top of the Mark II, which is obviously not very good. So what I did is I got a saw, and if I take the boiler off, and the little front of the cab, and sawed away at the front section of the running plate. Uh, the Basically the smoke box, uh, the, the cylinder chest piece, I think I believe it's called. I, I've said that in the last update, so I hope I'm right. But I sawed a bit off, uh, in fact a millimetre, and it really has improved the height, the height of the locomotive. It's now just a tiny bit over the top of the Mark One, which is uh, the sorry the Mark Two, which is the perfect height uh, for the engine. Uh, so I'm very pleased with that. Also, uh, the first coat of paint has gone onto this. This is just the going to be the undercoat, but it's again uh, Humbrol satin black, like what I've painted all the other black components on the engine with. And as you can see, it's a bit of a pain um, because you can see it's done what I said it would do on the side of the tender, gone matte in some places, gone satin in some places, and gone gloss in others, even after a lot of mixing. Luckily this is the undercoat, and I, I hope that when I come to do the um, final coat on top of this, it will go a nice satin black colour, uh, pretty much like the uh, firebox here. This is this was amazingly under only one coat, I've got to do a second coat on it, but it's gone quite a nice colour, uh, which is yeah, pretty much perfect for what I'm after. Uh, so that's really all that's happened to the um, uh, running plate. I've also uh, painted the buffer beam, which is uh, around some bits in the box behind me, uh, drying. But uh, I, I've done an undercoat on that as well. Then that will be glued onto the front of this, uh, hopefully in the next update. And obviously all this will be painted black underneath as well. I've still got to uh, figure out a, a way of attaching the front pony truck to the um, chassis. But uh, that's going to be uh, probably some bit of plastic uh, hanging down from there and then slotting under. So it also adds, acts as a slot mechanism to uh, fit onto the running plate like so. And I've got a box of screws. I'm not sure if I've got them with me. Uh, no, they're two at the bottom of the box. <laughs> so uh, I've got a, a box of screws which will basically be the correct diameter for this um, hole here on the pony truck. And they will be screwed uh, through the little support. Um, that will, I will be creating onto the running plate and hold it on there. So that way I won't have to modify the chassis in any way so there's no drilling into the chassis so the, the chassis will be perfectly unmodified and so with a bogey which is great. Uh, the boiler, now quite a lot has changed on the boiler if I move this back out of the way. Um, as you saw in the last update I cut away this section here um, and it was resting on top of the motor. Now obviously since then I've actually created the firebox. Now this side is complete. Uh, and so is the underside. Uh, obviously I've still got to use the filler to cover in the wheel splasher from Truro because um, that's obviously what would have slotted onto the frame on the, uh, the the running plate on the original Truro kit so I've got to get some filler and fill that in. Uh, but the uh, firebox is practically complete. Uh, you can see I've made a few little modifications here to so the wires uh, as you can see there on the uh, motor actually fit in but that doesn't really matter. Uh, now you're probably wondering why there's a massive gaping hole on this side. Now this is for a reason. Um, as mentioned, these pesky little um, uh, parts of the motor on the one side, which is if you're looking down through the cab, uh, if you were standing in the cab, it would be the left side. You've got this brass uh, uh, copper contact here, and you've also got this, what I presume is a resistor. Now, I mentioned uh, sitting on the, boil the boiler on top of the motor last week, they were sitting lopsided because of this. 
uh, and I had to do a bit more modification. Um, as mentioned at the start of the project, I was going to have to create a box to fit over the top of this, uh, something that the 2600 uh, never carried. Uh, but this being a kit bash and uh, me having a, a good idea of what I want the locomotive to be or represent when it's finished, uh, this modification, this box, will, I feel, enhance the project. Um, I was hoping it was going to be a, like a little square box along the bottom uh, or a little tall uh, rectangular box to cover up the brass, um, the, sorry, the copper contact. But as I mentioned, the resistor um, got in the way as well. So I had to create this uh, sort of um, stepped thing. So basically, it'll be a big rectangular box with like a little tall fin bit at the top, which will, as you can see, if I slide it back on top temporarily, there we go. Uh, we'll cover up this section here. Um, this bit of the cab, I've also modified the cab, uh, the cab front because uh, um, I want to keep the windows and the, obviously the little holes for the supports of the whistles. Uh, so I cut out the firebox itself and uh, it slots on quite nicely on there. Uh, I was thinking of having to totally create one that part from scratch but it sits on there very very nicely even around the, um, if I move it a bit closer sorry, the uh, copper contact. But with that temporarily in place, you'll see the you can see the sort of the design for what the bo where the box is going to go. Now, I was thinking, what would that box represent? So I did a bit of research um, into locos with covers on the side of uh, the firebox, and I came up with quite an interesting discovery that certain engines around this period were fitted with boxes on the side. Obviously, uh, not Great Western engines. It was mostly LSWR engines, but they uh, some of these engines were fitted with uh, I believe it was called a water. Uh, a water tube firebox. Uh, it was a sort of a modification uh, to a firebox. Uh, certain engines were fitted with it and then later it was removed. But basically, uh, with this engine, um, as obviously being a rough representation of the 2600 uh, and me modifying it for certain reasons, I'm going to say that this engine had a water tubed firebox, which is why explains this box. And looking at the uh, LSWR prototypes for this uh, firebox, it turns out that these boxes tended to be on the left side if you're looking from the cab, which is, of course, this side. So it made perfect sense. So that's what I plan to do. Uh, basically, it'll be like a little a little step box with glow on there and hopefully that will cover up the copper contact and the, re uh, the resistor and the body will sit on there perfectly straight, no issues. And as I mentioned, it will enhance the um, the uh, end feel of the loco, uh, which is what the livery the livery will be, uh, but I'm going to keep that under wraps until um, until a later update. But um, for now, uh, that's what's really changed on the locomotive, which of course brings us nicely on to the tender. And as you can see, it is practically um, completely uh, assembled. Uh, obviously, I haven't done any modifications because no modifications were really needed to the tender. But well. There are, there are one or two little modifications to enhance its running. Uh, first of all, as I mentioned, the wheels. Now, the, as you can see, they have been fitted. Now, if I show you what they are, they are Hornby um, disc wheels with two holes. I need these for my LMS CCT unit. A unit. Uh, as I mentioned in my wagon review when I did a bit, uh, it quite a few months back now, uh, the wheels were wonky on it, and sadly uh, I tried to fix one and it literally just fell apart. It was actually moulded in the factory wrong, um, so there's no way of bending it or realigning it. So I went out and bought the pack of these, which of course is coming very useful, so I get to fix that wagon. And also, it provides extra weight and smoother running for this um, tender, because the plastic wheels, as mentioned in the last update, um, I think, uh, the flanges on them uh, were absolutely shocking. Uh, they were very, very fine. Um, the wheels had no weight. They were wonky. They would literally, I could just imagine them derailing going in a straight line. So these metal wheels add to the weight so it keeps it on the track. And also, as you can see, I don't want to push it too hard. It runs quite smoothly. And you've got a short section of track if it, otherwise it'll go off the end of the table. But what I've done is I've painted the inner center of the wheels. Um, black and left the outside uh, silver so it matches with the older sort of style wheels as you can see uh, with the pony truck uh, that are being used on the rest of the loco. Now also many of you have uh, probably commented uh, why I'm I'm using dist wheels instead of um, spoked wheels. Now like the uh, box on the side of the firebox this will also enhance the end feel of the loco so you have to keep you thinking of what the livery is, and those of you who do know the livery, don't say anything about it because I want it to be a bit of a surprise. Um, but yeah, so uh, 
the wheel's been added. Uh, also, I have added, well, basically weight to the Loco in the form of blue tack. Uh, a bit crude, I know, but um, it really does make the model much heavier. In fact, I would say this tender is almost uh, as heavy, well, it's about the same weight as the sort of tenders you get um, like with the railroad models now. Um, they are quite light, but um, I think this one's almost a tiny bit heavier than the one I got with that comes with the P2, or about the same weight. And considering that this tender is quite a substantially smaller than the P2 tender, I'd say that's quite an achievement for, <laughs> for what I've done with this. Uh, basically, all the components were already pre-painted. I'm going to have to do some little touch-ups on it. Um, obviously, I ha added the finer details as well, which include the, the water scoop and the, um, I think it's the handbrake, I'm not sure, or the both water scoops, I don't know. Uh, the two uh, handles that go there and there, um, and also there's a little uh, hole there for a little support for the um, fireman's tools. Uh, for the firebox and obviously the shovel and everything that could be laid along the top there that hasn't been added yet nor has the vacuum pipe on the back uh, or the buffers I have added the coupling uh, the chain link coupling although I have cut it down I've got to paint the bottom of it because you can see it's, it's gone back to the white plastic where I cut it that is so it doesn't uh, get in the way of the the tension lock coupling when I add it I have added the support for the tension lock coupling because obviously with these wheels these are slightly smaller than the uh, original wheels that came with the kit, uh, so it might be a bit lower. So I'm gonna have to uh, modify the stand so the, the 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 tension lock coupling is the correct height for a rolling stock. Um, apart from that, I think it's pretty much uh, I've pretty much covered it. Um, so I'm gonna add those little finer details when it gets to the end uh, because I don't want them to snap off when they're in the box and stuff. And obviously it gives me more room to paint around the touch up the black area and of course add the final livery, which I will reveal in a later update. So I guess that's all for about now. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, how I'm going to couple it to the engine. I might as well do that one I have. Uh, this here is the original coupling for the kit. Uh, this, I presume, here, would be um, glued to the loco, this end. And this part here be glued to the spike, uh, well it wouldn't be glued to the spike, but you can see it slots into the part of the uh, the little pin on the bottom there. But what I'm thinking of doing uh, is basically modifying this and turning it around and gluing this to there and then the pin that was supposed to uh, fit through there uh, and glue it to the loco will be glued to the far end hole here and uh, if I flip the loco over there's the coupling, original coupling uh, hole on the bottom of this uh, 09 chassis uh, for, got, don't want to pull that off, that's the wire. Uh, um, you can see here, that's the front one, that's where the, the bolt for the pony tr truck will go in. It won't obviously, it will just sit in there because obviously the plastic thing I attached to the front frame will go in there. But there's also one on the back, so I'm hoping that the pin will correctly line up with this hole here, so it will sort of, I could just like the old mainline models, just simply pop it in the hole and it will hold on to the back of the chassis there. So that's the theory, so I hope it all works out. So I guess that's all for about uh, this update. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I guess there's a lot more to come. Uh, I've obviously got to still do the cab, I've got to figure out how to attach the, got to put the pony truck on, I've also got to finish off the detail and then of course painting. Now painting is the most annoying thing I've found on this project so far as with the satin black but I hope the livery I have chosen, the paint that I will use for the livery anyway, will come out a lot better than the black has. So um, we'll just have to wait and see. So anyway this has been SDJRSMF88 speaking and uh, thanks for watching.